The D-hole tool is used to create a round hole with one, two, or four flat sides. While there are many functions of a D-hole, they are typically used to hold a switch tightly in place. In this tutorial, I will create a single D-hole above the audio text already on my panel. Then, I will create a series of four D-holes positioned in each corner of our sample panel. I will start by selecting the D-hole tool at the top of the screen. I'd like to place this D-hole directly above the audio text. So, I select the reference tool at the top that allows you to place an object in relation to another object. I then scroll over the audio text and click on the reference point. This brings up a new window. In DY field, I enter 13. This will place the D-hole 13 millimeters above the audio text. When I hit OK, the D-hole properties window will automatically appear. I would like to create a round hole with two flat sides, so I select the double option. Next, I enter the diameter of the overall circle. With the diameter entered, I now need to tell Front Panel Designer how much it needs to cut off the sides. I do this by entering how wide I want the D-hole to be, and the program will determine how much to remove from the sides. For this D-hole, I would like it to remain in the upright position, so I will not do anything with the rotation field. Next is the Tool Selection option. Depending on the parameters of your device, consider using a smaller tool to get tighter inside corners. But note, using a smaller tool can also increase the price. At this point, my D-hole is complete. I hit OK to place it on my panel. Next, I want to create a series of D-holes that are positioned proportionately in each corner of my panel. I will begin by creating the first D-hole in the series in the bottom left corner. With the D-hole tool still selected, I press the M key to position this first D-hole. I would like to create another D-hole with two flat sides, so I make sure the double option is selected within D-hole properties. Now I will enter the diameter of the overall circle, which is 6.1 millimeters. Next, I enter a width of 3.5 millimeters. Notice this time the width is much smaller than the overall diameter, so it creates more of a rectangular shape with rounded edges. With the first example, the width wasn't too much smaller than the overall diameter, so it maintained more of a circular shape. For this D-hole, I would actually like to lay it on its side, so the flat portions are on the top and bottom of the shape. Therefore, I type 90 into the rotation field to rotate the D-hole by 90 degrees. For this demonstration, I will leave the automatic selection box checked, allowing Front Panel Designer to determine the tool to use. Rather than recreate the other three holes in the series, I'm instead going to mirror this D-hole on the other side of the panel. I press the space bar to switch to the Select tool. I then right-click on the first D-hole and select the Mirror option. I'm going to first mirror this D-hole to the right side of the panel, so I select the Mirror Horizontally option. Next, under Mirror Axis, I select the Center of Front Panel option. Lastly, I check the Apply to Copy box and hit OK. This will create a mirror duplicate of the D-hole I just made and place it in the same position on the opposite side of the panel. Now, I would like to copy both of these D-holes to the top of my panel. To do this, I select both D-holes, then hold down the Shift key and press the S key to bring up the mirror menu again. This time, I would like to mirror both D-holes to the top of the panel, so I select Mirror Vertically. The center of front panel and Apply to Copy options are still selected. So, I hit OK and the two D-holes are mirrored on the top of the panel now. I have now created a single D-hole as well as a series of four D-holes in each corner of the panel.